Turn it up, let it start. From block to block, we snatching hearts and jacking marks. And the October 9th, uh, we can say happy Columbus Day to some people and uh, happy Indigenous People Day to others, I don't know, it's a, it's a change they've been doing and all, so it's probably been a long time coming, so, uh, I don't know, Columbus Day is kind of weird, I've always thought about it as a kind of kind of like a weird holiday, I'm like, we're celebrating this shit, like, y'all know the history of this shit, no one ever thinks about it though, um, we just go off what we're told in like elementary school and social studies class, middle school and shit, and it's just like, you know, we just pretend like it's all good, you know what I'm saying, so, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, again, thank you for joining me, this is The Morning Took, my name is Eddie Law, and this is what's on my mind today, so, I mean, obviously, what everyone's been talking about since Saturday night, UFC 229, uh, amazing pay-per-view, honestly, it was a great, great card overall, everyone pretty much delivered, um, there was only a couple of fights that I wouldn't call them duds. But I wouldn't call them the most exciting fights ever, right? Like, Sergio Pettis for Miga, you know, fair enough, but... I, I mean, how are you going to finish a fight being a backpack on somebody like that? And I'm trying to, not really ever trying to advance position and shit, so... That fight to me was like, eh, whatever. But, um... Obviously, pay you kicked off with Michelle Watterson and Felice Herrig. Uh, everyone thought Herrig was going to have the uh, size advantage, and she did. It just didn't matter for shit, really. Uh, Michelle Watterson used that... That sidekick to the face, to the body, to the friggin' thigh. That, uh, I guess it's the oblique kick or whatever. She used the shit out of that to keep her at bay. And um, and then once it went to the ground, Michelle off her back was threatening. Michelle on the top was threatening. Off her back, those elbows were perfect. I mean, the, she scored plenty. Felice couldn't do anything. Couldn't pass guard. Couldn't do anything at that point. So, couldn't bully her the way she, uh, she and many others thought. Uh, uh, you know, we would see what she would do, and that kind of destroyed her game plan, so Michelle Watterson, to me, uh, won that pretty handily, and to me, that, that kind of uh, validates her, validates her, especially after that, that, uh, you know, iffy win over, uh, I think, it was Casey, so, that, uh, it, was, it was a great thing to see from Michelle Watterson, honestly, I was, I was pretty pumped about that, and then afterwards, she says, you know, I want to be the first UFC champion that's a mom. That's, uh, that's, uh, you know, everyone got a little teary after that one, because that was, that's pretty, that's a good message in a day where we don't get many good messages, right? So, kind of want to hang on to that kind of stuff. Anyway, after that, we had the, uh, I think it was the Derek Lewis, uh, Angela Alexander Volkov fight. Lewis getting dominated, but dude did not quit. You know, eyes poked, or, or punched, however you want to, you know, see it. You know, issues with his back, as we've always known. Who knows if we got him in this fight or not. I'm hoping it did, you know, that he was good. And then to come back with the last thing, it was like 12 seconds left or something like that, or 15 seconds left, come back with that overhand right, landing it right on the chin. I mean, Volkov's head shook like it was going to fall off his body. That was a sick uh, comeback win. I definitely enjoyed the fuck out of that fight. That was a great, great fight. I just like to see guys come back. And then takes off his shorts. Joe Rogan asked him, like, why'd you take off your pants? And, uh... <laughs> that black beast, Derek Lewis, was just like, my balls is hot. Like, yo, like, first of all, Derek Lewis needs to be on the JRE podcast ASAP. Like, ASAP. That dude's gonna be good. By the way, oh, by the way, if you're gonna, if, if you're around today, um, word is that John Kavanaugh, Conor McGregor's head coach, is gonna be on the Joe Rogan Experience podcast today. Um, that's the word. I'm not 100% sure what time or if it's for sure today, but I was told it was today and it's, it's on Twitter, all over Twitter at this point. That is going to be today, so definitely keep an eye out for that. I'll be definitely listening to it because I want to hear his reaction to all the melee and everything that happened, but definitely to the fight and how the training went for for, uh, for Conor McGregor training for for, for a guy like uh, like Khabib and Madoff. All right. Anyway, after the Black Beast fight, we had uh, um, Reyes against uh, uh, OSP, and kind of went how I, how I expected. I picked OSP because OSP just pulls out the bomb flu choke so goddamn always. And, or, you know, it seems like, he's done it like two, two or three times now. And I thought he'd be able to, to get that to the ground and, and get that, um, and get that done. Plus, his head kicks are fucking crazy. But Reyes is dominating him pretty much. And then, uh, you know, 
it should have been a finish, but it wasn't. It was a decision. But he, that, that, at the end, he was knocked out. OSP was knocked out. I'm not sure what Mergliata was thinking, but uh, I, I'm, I, I think it should have been a knockout. should have gotten us a knockout, but you know, you never know. All right, after that, we had the co-main event. Tony Ferguson against Anthony Pettis. Great fight. Pettis hurt Ferguson real bad with the, with the hand that he broke doing it. And then, uh, you know, after that, just couldn't use it. And it gave Tony Ferguson, you know, time and, 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 and the ability to recover. And then the fight was waved off at the end, I believe, I think the end of the second because of that broken hand. And I, while I feel bad for Anthony Pettis, I, I, I got to... I got to give a hand to Duke Rufus, looking out for his, for, for, for his fighter. For coaches, their fighters, you know, have to be like the, their sons or daughters, right? Like, are you really going to send him out with one arm against the guy as crazy as Tony Ferguson? You're going to send him out with one hand? It's, it's it's hard to ask a fighter to do that. A lot of fighters would do it. And I'm sure Anthony Pettis would have gone out, right? And But, you know, Duke was asking him, like, hey, can you, is it broken? Is it broken? And you know, Pettis like, yeah, it's broken. Right? And then, uh... Rufus, I think, said something like, I can't have you out there like that. So he waved it off. So I, I got to give him a hand. Because we've seen a lot of examples of, of the opposite. Where coaches just let their fighters go out there to take a beating, to take a whooping, and they come back, to, you know, sometimes with some crazy scars. So it's uh, and not just, you know, physical scars, but, you know, mental scars and, you know, confidence shot and all that. So it was nice to see the, the win for Tony Ferguson. But, man, I would have loved to see that third round had Pettis had not broken his hand. That would have been a crazy third round. I, I low key want to see that one go, you know, get run back at some point. Maybe not, now, obviously not now, nor next, but, but yeah. As far as Tony Ferguson goes, uh, who, is there anybody else next for the title? You know what I mean? Unless they do a rematch, but is there anyone left next for the title? It's got to be that man. That guy has to fight for the title next, right? Um, or in the you know scenario that I'm thinking of after, but we'll we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. And then, of course, the main event, Khabib Nurmagomedov against, uh, or Khabib Nurmagomedov against Conor McGregor. And the walkouts, obviously, I think my favorite part was McGregor getting, uh, you know, the the, the, uh, the uh, Foggy Dew song going on there. And then they had the ice machine or the fog machine in the octagon with, the, you know, with all the fog and everything. That was a sick shot. And to have McGregor walk in there like that was pretty cool. As far as Khabib goes, the lights, like when they do it in the lights with his song going, the red lights and all the light works and everything. Made you think like Vanderlei was about to walk out, like back to the Pride Days type of stuff. That was pretty freaking cool. So, and enjoy the hell out of that for sure. And then the fight itself, Habib. I mean, Habib, you know, ate some shots, but he was just smart with moving you know, his movement. Definitely smart with his movement. You know, and you know, gets uh, secured the takedown, wrapped the legs up, then let McGregor get back up. McGregor got up maybe like a, like two or three times, but was immediately taken right back down. McGregor didn't have a lot of time. Or opportunity to to do you know do damage on the feet, it just wasn't there for him. You know, and Habib man did a really good job of making sure that that's how it went. And then of course having to tap out to the neck crank. And a lot of people making fun of him because you know they always bring up the example of Holly Holm going out on her shield. Um, and McGregor tapping twice. And I like the nickname McCapper because it's funny to me, right? But uh, dude tapped, and um, and I don't blame him. The neck cranks kind of the neck cranks really suck. And you can definitely get a real injury off of that. So, uh, that being said, man, he was exhausted. There was just no gas left. He did a good job of, of not using too much energy off, off his back to, uh, to keep Habib off of him or away from him. But a guy like Habib who knows how to pray, put pressure on you, use his size, his power, his weight, his base, it was just, you know, it was kind of written on, you know, writing on the wall by, by to me by like mid third round. So, that, uh, that was uh, gave us the story of the fight, and then you know, he gets finished at the end. So um, McGregor's a warrior, and, and he'll be back. And I wouldn't mind seeing the rematch, just not now, not next. But you know, the UFC likes to give uh, likes to give guys like McGregor, you know, just a free pass to the title. Mind you, Sonnen did it as well, a handful of times. So anyway, um, at the at the end of the third round, McGregor said something, and it was kind of on video when McGregor said something like, "It's only business." And Habib replies with, I guess so. Right? You gotta wonder what Habib was telling him in the cage. Because Habib was talking to him. And I mean, Connor was talking back to him. But Habib was saying some crazy shit, I'm assuming. Because for Connor to be like, yo, 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 you freaking take it. You're taking it serious? Relax, dude. This is business. Chill the fuck out, you know? Um, on top of that, he was grabbing his glove. That might have been part of it. As in, Connor was grabbing Habib's glove to stop him from, from you know, 
brown and pound. And uh, so that's, that might be part of it. But definitely, the uh, to me, it must have been something uh, Khabib was saying. Or Habib was saying to him to make McGregor go, dude, it's only business. Like, you need to chill out with like, whatever crazy stuff he's saying. And then end of the fight, Habib doesn't throw his hands up. He just kind of goes, yeah, yeah, starts you know, yelling at him. He might have spit on him a little bit. He might have spit on him a little bit. And then... Um, which does what it looked like to me. I, I might be I'm probably wrong. He's probably yelling at him, but who doesn't want to spit on him? But he probably didn't. Anyway, um, throws and then looks at Connor's corner, throws his mouthpiece at them from inside the cage, so it didn't go over, but just, you know, like, like he's throwing that at him. Dylan Dennis was to say some stupid ass shit because Habib jumps over the, the, the cage just quick enough to where the, uh, uh, the commission rep that was in there with, you know, those guys with the red jackets wasn't able to grab him. Like, was not able to grab him and stop him from jumping over. He jumps over and freaking, like, leaps on over uh, uh, Kavanaugh and Owens. Or Owen. And uh, uh, goes right at Dylan. Grabs him, drags him. Assuming he took a, you know, took, threw a couple punches. I got to give Dan a tiny bit of credit for not, you know, running away. And, and, and you know, throwing some throwing back a little bit. Or trying to. Before they got separated. But then... At the same time that was happening, Conor McGregor tries to jump over the cage. Gets great. He actually gets grabbed by one of the commission guys and and pulled back down. But uh, Habib, one of Habib's cornermen, starts jumping over the. You know, gets basically gets to the top of the cage, like he's about to jump over. And McGregor just lands, just throws a left. There's so much it might have slapped him, but punched him right in the left hand. And then uh, that's when it got crazier in the cage because he smacks him. The guy who he smacked starts trying to hit him back. He gets dragged off the cage as well. And then Habib's corners are friends, like two of his friends, rush the cage, jump in there, and uh, one of them goes over to, to slap Connor. I think he did, but then he ate a left hand too. But then the guy, this guy in the red shirt, and I forget the names. And I, I'm assuming the, the, it's assumed and, and you know reported that they were uh, uh, UFC fighters, so they might be in some deep shit. But um, the guy in the red comes from behind. Connor and lands like three cheap ass shots, like real hard ones too. And um, you know, at that point, like the you know, and then the guy that he originally slapped that was on top of the or smacked that was on top of the cage, like sh- like shoots on him, starts trying to fight him again. You no, know, Connor shoots on Connor, starts trying to fight him again. And that's pretty much where everything kind of stopped because that's when everyone you know, grabbed everybody. But it was such a mess. A couple things, notes on just the guys jumping into the cage. Um, they did get arrested, but they were, the all three of them got arrested, but they were released because, uh, Conor McGregor declined to, to press charges, whether or not it's because he doesn't care about that stuff, or because he slapped that guy first, and he had to admit it, he probably got in a little bit of trouble, um, you know, he didn't, uh, press charges, but, what kind of, I mean, they're gonna have to rethink security, as far as, like, what to do, should that, you know, should a fighter jump out of the cage? First of all, they got to put in some crazy, like some really harsh or really strict punishments for doing stuff like that, right? You can't, you can't do that. You cannot do that. But they got to rethink cage security, octagon security. Like the second some, something like that happens, that's that that, that that octagon has to get locked down, like immediately. You got to have every security guard like pops up and starts like blocking out people or whatever they got to do. They got to surround that the octagon. And stop anybody from jumping over. You know what I mean? Because, you know, I'm not surprised that that's that easy for people in the front to, you know, run up and jump over. But it shouldn't have been that easy. You know what I mean? But but the only way you, you make this group is for, for shit to go down like this. So, that's uh, that's going to be an improvement that they're going to have to make. They're going to have to figure out security all over again. Um, anyway, so after all that, they get Habib back in the cage. They're trying to, you know, they call, they, they someone calm him down. Daniel Cormier and, and Luke Rockwell go in there. His teammates from AKA, they go in there to calm him down. They do, or it seems like they do. But he's wondering, when am I gonna get my belt? Put my belt on me. Put raise my hands. I won. I beat. I beat this dude. I tapped him. And Dana White goes up to him and says, "Look, I can't do that because the crowd's gonna go insane." He goes, "You know, they're gonna start throwing stuff in the octagon." And Habib goes, "I'm ready for this." And uh, uh, Dana White goes and goes, yeah, you, you know, maybe you are, but no, we're not. You know, all these people out here aren't. There's like 20,000 people in the, in the crowd. These people aren't. You know, it's, his point was it's gonna get insane. Like people, it's it's gonna get dangerous. So they finally get Habib to, to go out with security. They rush him back to, to his locker room. On the way out, at the very end, he gets like 
drenched with beer, and he's got you know, people flipping him off and shit. And um, and you know, Dana White was sort of right. Now there wasn't too much that I that I heard of or saw in the crowd as far as fights go, but that shit spilled out to like the outside of, outside of the inside team over arena, but outside of the like you know the seated arena area itself. There was like crowds fighting and shit. There was like, dude, I don't know what the hell. This is video now. This one dude, white dude, looks drunk as hell. I can't tell if he's American or Irish or whatever he is, right? But he goes out and starts flipping everybody off. So you know, dude that looks like he's like, uh, like a Russian dude knocks him the hell out cold. So, um, alcohol, ladies and gentlemen, alcohol, alcohol will make you do some stupid shit. Like definitely will make you do some stupid shit you don't need to be doing. So. It's something uh, you gotta think about when you go to like fights, when you, especially when you go to fights, because you know, people get heated, they pick their sides. But when you go to like football games and other sporting events, alcohol's a prop. Because um, you know, grown ass freaking adults should be acting like that. But again, alcohol, so it comes with the territory. But um, of course, there was reports of that spilling onto the streets and all that. Outside the arena, though, I mean, there was one guy that was reporting that that there was Irish and Russians hugging and taking pictures together and. You know, trying to keep the trying to show that they're not animals, that they're you know civilized human beings, and and, and they're uh, not going to you know they're not going to like give them the stereotype that they're going to fight each other because you know one of their guys lost or whatever you know have you. So um, this you know it, it's better to have it go down between two guys in a cage and you know thousands of fans outside the arena or anywhere else. Um, so, you know, Dana White's kind of right on that. You know, after the fight, you know, no one got posted on interviews. Uh, Habib did uh, did have, like, a statement that he read or that he gave at the post-fight. There was, you know, he said, sorry to you know, to Nevada. Sorry, because okay, he's deep shit with Nevada State Athletic Commission, but the state as well. The governor was there, according to Dana. But, so sorry to the UFC, sorry to the you know, Nevada, Las Vegas, you know, whatever. Um, but he didn't say... He wasn't. He didn't at all. You know, indicate that he was, you know, sorry or, or, or he remorseful or, or that he regretted what he did. And I don't think he did. And here's the thing. So right after the event, I did a post-fight show. Um, I had uh, Ash Lambert as my guest, and uh, uh, which I appreciate. I, I appreciate my brother. Six in the end, six in the morning in the UK. He still jumped on to do a post-fight show that ended up being almost an hour, I think, um, maybe even more. But. He, uh, anyway, so we were talking about it. I was still on the mindset of, of, I can't believe it. You know, it was, it was literally super fresh. I hadn't thought about anything else. I literally hadn't thought about the buildup. I hadn't thought about anything that Connor said. I thought about what just happened right then and there. Right. And at that moment, I didn't think Connor McGregor did anything. Right. Cause I had, at that point I hadn't seen the video of him slapping the corner, you know, or, or, or anything. So. At that moment, to me, I thought Conor McGregor was sort of, you know, like, what, you know, what this is all on Khabib, right? Or Habib. Mind you, it's still all on Habib for you know, jumping out the cage and starting shit. Definitely on him on that, okay? But a lot of people talking about, you know, freedom of speech and all this stuff. Y'all forget Habib's not American. Habib's not from here. Habib's from, from Dagestan, from Russia. From, you know, it's a, it's a harsh place. A harsh place where respect is highly valued, right? Highly valued. And, but they're not about freedom of speech over there. You can't just say whatever you want and just walk around. Over there, you say something wrong, you know, all they have is the, is the you know, the word and the respect. And, and you're not going to disrespect guys, you know, those guys. So he did what it felt like he had to do. You know, when Dylan Dance was yapping his mouth. Mind you, Dylan Dance talks a lot. I mean, come on, dude. Stop that shit, man. Why don't you focus? Focus on your, on your career. Um, RDA got him pretty good. And then Dan said something fucked that shit. But I'll get that in a second. Anyway, so. My thoughts right now, after you know, a, a day, about a day to to digest it and, and think about it and see all the other clips and all the other angles. Um, what did we expect to happen? You know what I mean, I don't think we expected a melee, but I think we should have expected a very something very personal, at least between Habib and Connor at the end of the fight or after the fight. You know what I mean? Certainly during the fight, but I think. We, maybe we, not that we should have known, but I think we should have thought about like what could possibly happen, right? And um, I'm not surprised by Habib's reaction, to be honest with you, especially after all the shit talking, Connor bringing in family, talking about his dad, talking, talking about his religion, 
talking about his, you know, his country and all this stuff, you know, I'm not surprised. And a lot of people were like, well, you know, Con- uh, should have been a professional about it. Like, yeah, right, of course, but at some point, you're, you're just a man. I mean, you're always just a man, but, or, you know, a woman, you're just a human being. You know, but for him, he's just a man. Right, professional fighter and all that, great. But that comes with a lot of things. That comes with a lot of baggage, you know, emotions and pride and respect and all these other things, right? So, look, man, I tell you this: I'm I'm professional as they come, especially in my, you know, in my occupation and all that, you know. And and, and uh, I take it easy jitsu as far as like people, you know, talking smack. We have fun with it, whatever, right? But at some point, you cross that line. I might act a fool too, right? I might act a fool. So, um, bottom line, it's an unfortunate situation, very unfortunate situation, and it's really crappy because now we, 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 what's going to happen? Habib's going to get stripped, maybe, and it's possible, depending on what Nevada does. They said, I mean, the, the commission, depending on what the government does as far as criminal charges and possibly revoking his visa, whatever, whatever. Um, Maybe Dana White helps him like he helped uh, Connor in New York and uh, all, these, all these other, you know, possibilities that could happen. But it's, um, you kind of just hope that, that, uh, somehow this gets figured out. But uh, I'm already getting way long in the show, so I'm going to end it here in a minute. But here's my thoughts, okay? If it don't strip, Cubby, Tony Ferguson's next. Like, that's, that's the next fight, right? People were like, oh, the rematch with Connor. Connor got finished. Connor got dominated and finished. There's no, there's no reason for a rematch other than, you know, for, for, the, for a money grab. And I really don't see a second fight going any different. Okay? Um, how, you know, Connor's not going to turn out to be, not going to become a, a wrestling all star or jujitsu, you know, jujitsu killer. You know, in, in three months or whatever they, the, 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 the fight time allowed or the you know, training camp is for it for that fight, for that possible rematch. Um, so I think the Ferguson fight's next. And then maybe, you know, Connor after he, you know, maybe takes another fight or just takes some time off. Then uh, if they, you know, again, if they don't strip him, do the Ferguson fight. If they do strip him, my idea to fix 230, make Nate versus Dustin for the title, right? And then. Tony Ferguson gets the winner, guaranteed. Like he gets the winner. Um, I think that's the best way to fix that card. And you know, if he get, if Hubby gets stripped, um, keeps an order going in, in the lightweight division. But let me know your thoughts about that on the comment section on Twitter at Elot31. Um, it's gonna do it for the morning talk. I it's kind of kind of cutting it short because I have so much more to say. But I'll add more maybe this afternoon to a, to a different show, or I'll talk about it more on tomorrow's morning talk. All right, um, you guys are the shit. Shout out to SpicesPros.com for for uh, sponsoring this podcast. Get yourself some some of their. They got some good shit on there actually. A lot of, a lot of like new candy, and then uh, of course represent RipTheWarriors.com. A lot of new gear. The Make America Real Again gear. Um, it's the shit. So definitely go get yourself some at RipTheWarriors.com. Uh, get yourself some good some some uh, new fire fire gear. It's great shit and help us out at the same time. All right, guys. Uh, catch you guys tomorrow. Have a good day. Good evening. Good night. Wherever you are on the planet. Catch you guys later.